That said, uh, here are Joe and Heather. Hello, everybody. Oh, yeah, you can clap, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to boil down some basics about e-commerce from the technical side of things, I'd say, more like um, WordPress. Yeah, platform and, and, and so on. So I am primarily a WordPress developer, meaning I am more of a designer. Um, I'm not writing plugins or anything like that. I'm kind of assembling um, well-trusted parts of things into reliable websites that are easily maintainable and uh, secure and hopefully fast. Great. So um, there are other platforms out there for e-commerce, but we're going to focus on WordPress. And why WordPress? Personally, um, I like that it is free. Um, so that helps a lot, especially with startups. There's a lot, you can do a lot with um, sort of tinkering around, which is kind of fun for me. Um, and the initial investment is very small. Um, it's also a very widely used platform. So there are a lot of plugin developers and theme developers out there building products that will help you make something without becoming a developer, per se. Um, I have some notes. <laughs> so um, there are a couple of technical things um, that you have to keep in mind. Number one is your theme. What's it going to look like? Um, where is it going to get its design? And then the plugins, what are the functionalities that you're going to want your site to do, from contact forms to uh, product, uh, I guess, display, and the actual cart and the uh, payment gateway for the e-commerce stuff. Um, so where should we start? I guess we could start with... Why you like WordPress. Why do you like WordPress, <laughs> Heather? I have found it to be um, enjoyable to use, although not everybody is up for, I guess the flexibility does bring some challenges too because there can be quite a learning curve to it. It's not as, as out of the box as some of theirs. And I was really frustrated with that at first too, but um, fortunately I stuck with it and was able to kind of hit my stride on it. And now I wouldn't, I, I personally probably wouldn't be interested in using something else unless I don't know, something magical happened and uh, it, things do change, you know, as, as they do. But it's been a while and I'm still mm -hmm. on WordPress. Um, what about you? Um, so I do rockrabbitguitars.com, which is 100% on the internet, and I'm on my third uh, e-commerce site right now. Um, so uh, I was going to talk a little bit about maybe why you should not have a WordPress site and running WooCommerce. Uh, firstly, your customers in your market segment are already shopping somewhere else. If you look and whatever you're selling and if you're doing something with jewelry and you figure out that your market segment are already hitting Etsy, they have Etsy accounts, they're already purchasing on Etsy, you're gonna have an uphill battle of getting traction on your website, go start an Etsy store and get that to rock. And learn how to sell that way. Um, another good reason not to have a site of your own, of WordPress, is um, um, uh, so your customers. Two, uh, you, have, you have a widget to sell. When I first started Rock Rabbit Guitars, I had a handful of SKUs, and that was really the bare minimum, and it was a little bit of a struggle not having enough variety going to a website being able to purchase. It wasn't until I really got up to maybe like a dozen SKUs of enough variations to where having your own branded website starts to make sense and you start getting other like complimentary sales. I think now I'm up to maybe like 60 SKUs online. Um, a, a third reason not to do it is you are unable or unwilling to learn or DIY. Um, just two days ago, if you saw we had a, a uh, WooCommerce uh, security update, um, don't screw with those. You see it, you do it, um, you know, don't think I'm going to do it later, don't throw it out into a staging site for next week, uh, do that. Um, so if you cannot or will not do that, you should probably go out to like a marketplace, whether that's an Amazon or Shopify. A Shopify is awesome. I always recommend Shopify. 
Um, you know, and those will solve some of the problems. Like, for example, if you're doing your own WordPress e-commerce site, you need to go find hosting, which is a thing. And because of your website isn't running, you're not selling anything. Um, yeah, let's talk about hosting. Let's talk about hosting. So what do you do with hosting with your customers and recommend? And so um, the things about hosting are cost, traffic, and the interface. Like how are you going to need to be using, what kind of, what kind of services do you need? Um, for instance, primarily I'm using the cPanel-based um, web hosting, so I'm not doing it like from scratch. You know, I don't want to be that guy you know that's <laughs> that's troubleshooting all kinds of things on the server level um, so cPanel works for me I can do email um, I can check manually check files and uh, insert files and uh, mess with the files and stuff like that um, there's a little bit of that so I like a, a cPanel I'm not gonna name names uh, I'm not gonna like specifically name specific web hosting companies, um, I'm gonna stay away from that, but shared hosting, I will say, um, can be fine. Um, the cost can be pretty low. Anywhere from, well, probably cheaper than this, but anywhere from like $20 a year on up to however much you would care to pay for. And what you will get from those varying degrees is disk space, mainly, um, and then traffic, there's, a like how many people are coming to your site. So if you're just starting out, you can probably go with something a little bit more low end and then not have to worry about, uh, you know, maxing out on the traffic and crashing. And then as you get more popular, you can always upgrade that experience because it can get quite pricey um, for those more high end. And a lot of times you will give up some freedoms for those higher tier um, services, which could be good or bad, depending on what you're, into, you know, what you're willing to deal with. But I would say, above all of those things, you'll figure out which of those things are your criteria. But customer service is really important because things will go wrong, and you don't want to get stuck with a company that just goes to and, you know, I mean. On a weekly basis, things are going wrong. Random weird things are going wrong. Plugins need to be updated. There are conflicts. Um, something breaks. Something's just broken and nobody knows why. You know, it happens all the time. So make sure that your one of your criteria is customer service. So do you want to talk a little bit about? I, I mean, mine are probably more the low end needs mm -hmm. um, kind of hosting, but. Joe actually has a really great system that he uses. Do you want to talk about You know, a, a few years ago, I realized that RockRabbit was growing and getting some hits and doing a lot more stuff worldwide. And I realized I needed more than that. And I started looking out and putting RockRabbit uh, entirely on the cloud. And the service that I use is called Kinsta, which is a managed cloud service, um, especially for uh, WordPress and commerce. And what it is is they just combine uh, a group of services and make it all sort of works in a very easy fashion. So um, it's all served out of a Google Cloud, but like the DNS is all routed through uh, Amazon's, um, I don't know what they call it, the root so software. Then there's a Cloudflare in front and that's all integrated together. Um, and I did that for speed. Honestly, um, speed is king on your e-commerce site. And I think one problem with WordPress is when it started off as just a bloggy space, it was never speedy. It was never supposed to be speedy. And then as things grew and more plugins got onto it, it just kind of gets, it can be slow. Um, and just serving out in um, time to first bite is, is really important, um, not only for your customer experience, but also how Google tracks you. Um, getting that Google SEO uh, quality scores up. Um, and when you start getting fast, WordPress does one thing, and I do not know why, no one can probably tell you why, because um, Google likes WordPress sites. Self-hosted, fast WordPress sites, I don't know why, the bots crawl it, they love it, you will go right to the front page uh, very, very quickly. Um, who knows how Google's algorithms work, right? Um, so that's been my hosting experience, and, and, I, and I pay. At, at some point, you need to realize that you're making money and you're investing in your storefront. You could be paying rent out on Lincoln Way, 
um, and instead this is my storefront and I need it to run and actually my cloud experience is running so well that I don't even track my uptime anymore. I was I, just I, thinking of like, so what your uptime must be really good. You know, I did for the first six months and it was just 100%. It was, it, it was never off. I'm like, why, why do I bother? So, so that's been my experience is and uh, knowing when to make that jump. And if anybody is ever in that position, you know, come talk to me. I'd be happy to give you my experiences. Um, yeah, that's, I got a little taste of that too when mm -hmm. I was uh, working with you a little bit on it. And it is super fast and super amazing. If you've got the budget for it, um, I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, so that's hosting stuff. It's really hard to get too deep into it in this amount of time. So if anybody has any questions about hosting stuff, let us know. I, I feel like it'd be really easy for us to skim over something on accident. Mm -hmm. um, but then the last thing I had on our list was the styling. Like, that's, a, that's really like their big strength. Yeah, because when you've the got, bells and whistles. If you go out in a marketplace and you have your store, whether that's eBay or Amazon or Etsy or wherever, I'm on Reverb as well, which is my secondary site. You know, you're, you're stuck with what they give you. You have to work within their framework, that's their site. Those customers are their customers. Um, and when you get off on your own self-hosted WordPress site, when you build with like Heather builds you something, it's like, you get a plethora of choices like it almost can be overwhelming, overwhelming. and it's really hard to um, to think about all that when your main responsibility is thinking about your products and how you're going to be a good you know store in general you don't want to be worrying about fonts and colors and and it can get really overwhelming and crazy there are templates out there um, that you can buy that are designed specifically for e-commerce. So that would be a good way to start, um, a little more out of the box. But then you, inevitably, everybody everybody I've ever worked with runs into a brick wall where they're like, but I just want that to be blue over, you know, like I want that part to be blue and there's no way to make that blue out of the box. This is where that tinkering comes into play. If you're really interested, that's actually how I got in, interested in websites at all was because this was, well, should I say when? It was um, uh, Yahoo GeoCities. It was like a free website platform, and my band had, a web, a, we got a website on there, and um, I noticed that this, what is this? You could click on HTML. What is, that? what is that? You know, so I started looking under the hood there, and I got really excited about, like, it seemed like a secret, you know, like a secret code of how to do everything. So that's kind of how WordPress is too, because everywhere you look, there could be a thing that's a, like a puzzle that you're trying to solve. And um, if you want the customization and the flexibility of all of these little tools and tricks, then um, you can try to learn it yourself. Um, there's a lot of online help that you know tutorials that you can do that'll get you so far. And then you know ultimately the option is there to hire a developer too. To help you get through the bulk of that stuff that would just take so long to learn that it would frustrate you and probably make you run to something else to be quite quick. I mean, it's WordPress has gotten so popular. I think a, a third of the sites out there now are WordPress. The it's last still statistic, popular, it's, it's yeah. still pretty popular. So you have a gazillion coders all writing little bits of code, either for free or for purchase. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big advantages that drew me to WordPress in the beginning is I never have to code anything. If, if I want to do something, whether that's a custom little JavaScript or I want something to fly across the screen or click on something, it's out there and if you search for it. On the back end side, if you cannot get those always play nice mm -hmm. with each other, that's when you might need to get a developer like Heather to come in and help you with a WordPress. Um, but that is really, it's, it's a strength and also it's Achilles heel sometimes of getting those to go and to update with each other because mm -hmm. they're always guaranteed to update with the base WordPress whatever plugin you're running and usually the big ones test against each other as well whether it's a major plugin and gets a major plugin but just because you're running some odd little JavaScript pop-up doesn't necessarily mean that was all tested so and you're, you're, you will spend plenty of time on a staging site if you do your WordPress. That's a good idea, having a staging site. And um, yours does have that um, built in. Mm -hmm. You get that. And a lot of the shared ones have that too with uh, cPanel. Um, 
but yeah, I spend a good portion of every week figuring out problem, <laughs> problems solving and talking to plugin developers and even getting them together with each other. And I have had that happen recently where like a major catastrophic event was happening and the two plugin developers got together and they figured it out and um, made it work for everybody. I try really hard to vet whoever, whatever plugin or theme I'm going to be using. I, I want to make sure they're well supported. I, it's not some fly by night company that built one thing and then they're disappeared. Um, that happens a lot, you know, and I keep track of, uh, on a daily basis, I keep track of, I have things, tools that do this for me. Let me know if a plugin's been abandoned. So if nobody's made an update for it for, I think two years, it's considered abandoned, maybe longer, but I mean, a year is still pretty too long for my comfort, but. There's so many things that you can do out there. Um, so back to like the e-commerce type of things. So there's a, a plugin called uh, WooCommerce that is free. It's free, so that's great. Adds on zero dollars to your project. But what it does for free is not always enough. So um, for instance, is your product being shipped or is it just a digital download? So if it's being shipped, how much does it cost to ship it? Do you know how much it's going to cost? Does that cost change on a daily basis or an hourly basis? That can be really crazy. Does Do some of your things cost $2 to ship and some of them cost $80 to ship? It's really hard to make the, the system understand that variation. So those kind of things are good to, to think about um, to try to figure out what is worth paying for and not. So you can purchase live shipping rates from USPS or UPS for about $100 a year. A lot of plugins from WooCommerce are like $100 a year, <laughs> $80 a year, $100 a year. Um, I think when I first started for shipping, for example, I did that manually for about a year. And you can. And you can, up until you get too busy. Um, you do save a little bit of money, but then I eventually just bought the ship station for 30 bucks a month. It brings every place where you're selling on it brings in from an Amazon store which works and I've done it brings in from eBay brings in from any of your stores and puts it all in one spot um, I was probably a little slow to integrate that just because I thought well do I need it because I'm still able to print off on a, a printer and tape everything down by hand um, I would say I was so busy I should have done that a long time ago because buying a, a, a label printer and having it kick out it's faster for a single it's faster if you got a batch of a dozen things to print and get them shipped. It's, it's just a time saver. Um, but yeah. there's nothing wrong with starting off and just seeing what happens. Because when I started off, just talking about traffic and traffic, I, I remember there was one week in particular where I finally had a sale on Friday. And I was like, yes, I finally sold something this week. I'm like, I didn't want to go all week without with nothing, you know? So, it's very manageable at that rate. At that rate it is, and, and that's an excellent time to learn. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of my first year of my website just doing A-B testing. That was pretty much 12 months of A-B testing um, of the every cost possible combination. And that's where I learned about uh, keywords and pictures and shippings and shipping rates and what to do and not to do. So It can be challenging. and. There are so many little things to be thought of, uh, including shipping. Let's say, for instance, you have 20 items and mm -hmm. you have manually set a shipping rate for each thing for some reason, and now you have to change them all. Think of all the hours you're going to spend going in and changing. So automating things think is about really, shipping. Shipping it's is a really big thing. helpful. You got to think about how to take people's money. That <laughs> happens automatically if you have an Etsy store or an Amazon store. It does not happen automatically on your WordPress store. Payment gateway options. Think about think about those. Research those. Find out how your customers normally pay. Because your customers will not pay if you show them a symbol that they've never seen before. Right? So, for example, if you have a lot of customers in Japan, you better know what card they use. Um, That's a good point, the demographics of it. Because, you know, there's PayPal. Everybody's familiar with PayPal. But... You have to do add in. You payments. are a unique, well, unique to me, mm -hmm. situation where you're actually selling mm -hmm. internationally. Mm -hmm. So, whole nother level of stress and stuff to know. 
So shipping, payment. Um, third thing that is not included that would be included on your like your Amazon store is uh, security. Right. You need to watch that, and you need to have your firewall set and have a way to vet um, onto your site. And that's related to the hosting in a way, um, but there are different players in that that you can kind of assemble a nice little toolkit from multiple places like where you get your SSL. Cloudflare is a really great tool. Even the free one, you know, the free Anything is better than nothing. Yeah. Um, and in addition to making sure you're choosing secure plugins and keeping things updated, like you said, um, yeah, that can be a lot. How, how, how many hours do you think your customers spend a week? Have you ever asked? My... Oh, on their stuff? Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure, <laughs> no. I've got such a range, um, I, and... I can do maybe an hour, maybe two hours a week. Um, and that's not improving, that's not doing cool stuff. That's keeping things running, making sure nothing's broken, you know, where it's coming from, and monitoring my own metrics. Well, I do the service part right. uh, for my clients, so they don't have to do that. A lot of that stuff, mm -hmm. but, mm, yeah, it would, be, it would be at least, like, like a couple hours a week. Yeah. Just on technical mm -hmm. upkeep. Well, I can't think of any other specific things. Like, we, do we, how are we doing on time? Yeah, I think we're good. I think that's what we want to say. Anybody had any other questions? Always hit us up afterwards mm -hmm. about whether it's doing web development and thinking about building that, or I'm happy to share my experiences, um, as long as you're not a direct competitor of mine. <laughs> um, I have a question for the yeah. So like two things that came up were uh, focusing on maybe the design and buying templates or themes, and then also uh, one that came up from Joe was about website speed. I know that that's often a big factor of people dropping off. Uh, if I was building an e-commerce store and I had a limited budget, and I have to decide making it look pretty or making it fast, what do you think? What, do I, what would be a better bang for the buck? Well, what do you mean by pretty? I don't know, well designed, which I guess is subjective, but let's say I, I, I'm going to buy a theme through some sort of WordPress theme, or if I'm using Shopify, I use a Shopify theme. Okay, uh, my website number one was a one page blog. I made up each ad individually because I did not use WooCommerce. I made up my own little buy it now button myself that I linked out to my eBay ads. Every time I had a new eBay ad, I had to go back and manually change my picture, get the link that linked to a blank page. I did that for a year. My second one, I made it, I thought more is better. And I had a lot. And I did not quite have the hosting to feed all of that. Third website right now, I'm going for full speed. I thought about what was normal, and I went through a big process of stripping out the back end. Like, what do I need? What don't I need? I did a lot of speed testing what's calling out, and I found out how important it was to strip out all that excess uh, little JS scripts, JavaScripts. That stuff gets called up right at the beginning, and it's that time to first bite when you're just sitting there watching the thing scroll, that's the killer. If you've got your top of the fold page loaded, I think you're, I think you're golden. I think you can get that up and get something up, and then you can get them into that scrolling mode then I think you're good, but if you cannot get that first bite, so if you go to my website now, I've got like a static image sitting at the top. I mean, it's just served up through the CDN. Um, it's just super fast, and it was a really good experience on how to take and strip out a website without somebody looking and saying, hey, why is this all stripped out? On the on a, on a backup side, we're talking about updating. My updates have gotten super easy because I have so little of that JS sitting in the background now. I have very little trouble with that. It's almost too minimalistic. Um, <laughs> well, minimalistic isn't bad. I'd say speed is probably more speed important. Speed is king. Absolutely king. But it's not like design can't be important too. But the main thing with design is the user experience. Because they say, uh, can they find what they're needing to find? Is the thing they need in the place that they expect to find it, and they get there? I mean, because you're not going to make a sale if they can't find your, you know. Your product page. Because kind of the saying is that traffic's king and conversions are queen, but 
if you have so much traffic and things are just dead slow and people are exiting, it doesn't do you a bit of good. Um, for example, I've learned that I really don't need to track my conversion metrics anymore. I just don't. Uh, kind of the two things that I watch daily now is I watch my firewall just because during the lockdown, just security has gotten into a lot of trouble. Um, and, and take a look at card abandonment. Um, WooCommerce to my WordPress sends that to my phone with an order number. Everything is sequential. As soon as you hit the cart, you get your number. So if you abandon it, there's no number, right? So now I can just look in blocks of 10 as I can go back from yesterday, the day before, or last week, and I just, you know, like 13530 through 13539. Well, I can just count which numbers I have. So I can look, like, did I get eight out of 10? Do I get nine out of 10? If I fall down to five out of 10, that sucks. What's going on? You know, did something happen? So when you're, talking about, when you're talking about speed, I think it's learning through a process of what metrics to track because there are so many and everybody tracks different things depending on what you do. Is it okay if I interrupt? Mm -hmm. I think we're, we should be wrapping up. Yeah, I'll, let's do um, further questions. Let's do that after the next presenter. Great. Well, thanks, guys.